Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. Hi guys, welcome to this week's vlog. It's the end of my week really. Well I guess, you know, I guess your working day is, or rather the week starts on a Sunday, but for most of us we kind of look up Monday as the, as the start of the week, don't we? It's the end of our week, Sunday. We're just closing up the Fulcrum Centre. We've had a, a charity gardens day today here at the Fulcrum Centre and the Holdenby House Gardens. Absolutely busy all day. Jackie and I were staffing the place ourselves yesterday. Um, just, just sort of weird how fate went. Look at this vulture. <laughs> Look at that sunbathing, lesser yellow-headed vulture. Look at that beautiful, beautiful creature. Actually, finally getting some sunshine. It's been a bit poor this summer, hasn't it? Now, Jackie and I were here on our own yesterday on Saturday. And we, we managed okay and we had altogether seven of us here today so plenty of people to staff the place even though there was lots of people here look at him preening himself they're certainly not dirty things vultures any more than a rat or a pig is given the choice of course and it's been absolutely fantastic so we're just wrapping up, we're cooling down the day, we're just literally doing a walk around. We walk around every evening before we go home. It, it is very easy when you're tired and you run a large collection of animals to think you've done everything and overlook it. And um, we've all done it, we've all done it. I've left here before and I've left my Jack Merlin, a tiny bird of prey, smaller than a kestrel, um, sitting out on his block all night long. And this place, because of the lovely mature trees and woodlands all around the centre, uh, there's plenty of wild tawny owls. Um, and all I can think is that Jack Merlin must have kept very, very still during the night while he slept because it would have been easy prey for a tawny owl to take him off his block and eat him. So in that instance, very, very lucky. But we always do a walk around to make sure no one is left behind. <laughs> red-tailed hawk Melly there, molting into even darker, because she's a melanistic, dark phase red tail. A real treasure, beautiful bird and quite unusual here in the UK. And of course, we've got Specs, a spectacled owl, sort of dozing off in the sunshine. Well, he was. I woke him up, he doesn't really like me. The torches have gone away. Essentially, the whole place looks absolutely great. And the evening sunshine, it just makes everything look far, far better. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. Once again, the sunlight's playing in havoc. Here's a bird that I don't think a full kill probably enjoys flying, to be quite honest. This is Kyle's. Oh, come on, camera. God, oh, blimey. What are we doing? This is Kyle's red tail, not Melly. He's now just turned around, so you can't see her red tail. And she's a melanistic red tail. Look at that. It's a good looking bird of prey. It really is a good looking full kill bird. Really broad bulldog. A red tail sort of bulldog attitude and posture. And we're in a dark phase, very different from a normal red tail, very, very dark. And she's molting this year and she's growing a lot of darker feathers on her back. And the feathers do fade over the course of a year. Uh, the new feathers are really noticeably dark, lovely red tail that I was just about to show you. There you are, something, something for the falconers that watch the vlog. Quite a special bird, it's no, it's no different from a red tail. The colour doesn't make it, you know, beauty is as beauty does as they say but it's certainly a tremendously good looking bird and it's had some good success as a hare hawk in the past beautiful bird of prey absolutely gorgeous he's not going to turn around so we'll leave it at that but hopefully he just got a glimpse of a red tail before she turned to face the camera quick stretch out the back shade. 
So we've had a couple of hours drive and we stopped off on the way at our friend's reptile shop right near Hun Stanton, uh, link below. Small reptile shop that they're expanding and growing and really great guys and really good prices. Uh, we dropped a few baby snakes off to increase their stock levels and it was lovely to see Bindi. Those that keep an eye on the vlog will know uh, lockdown one was tough and we had to part with a couple of our uh, animals, one of our birds and a couple of our long-term lizards and Bindi is the shop pet at their shop so it's lovely to see her, she's really really doing well. Um, they've got a lovely big tegus and boa constrictors, all kinds of garter snakes. So check out the link below and check out the little snippets of video here. And then now rather chilling out an evening walk with Jackie and the dogs after a really hot sweaty week at work working long evenings as well it is glorious a sea breeze to cool you down paddling the sea the beach is quiet it's later on in the evening now and absolutely proper relax and goodness knows we certainly need a little bit of that right now and a little shampoo and set. I think she's much happier now and I really think Jack is less happy now. She doesn't even care. Yeah, well you're gonna go for a swim in the sea right now. fish and chips check out this picture because well this picture wherever it is over there maybe highly rated and Stanton right in the middle there where all the people go Ugh. cracking fish and chip shop biggest bit of fish we ordered large fish and chips my god if we weren't sharing we would have had to be ultra pigs it was the size of the size of Moby Dick now I know Moby Dick wasn't a fish but it gives you some idea my goodness the biggest fish and chips ever and all their packaging was really recyclable. It was paper or card or wood rather than plastic and polystyrene takeaway stuff. Um, oh, absolutely handsome bit of fish and chips. So if you're actually driving through Stanton, probably one of the places to go for sure. Have a look where we are now. We're walking the dog. It's evening time now and it's much cooler here than back home. Just have a look because I keep forgetting I can't reverse the camera once it's videoing. Look at that. I don't know how far we've actually got to walk to walk off the fish and chips but we'll give it a go. Here is the number one thing you can do to get your kids interested in wildlife or to fuel their wildlife craving. Rock pooling. Everywhere here it is 
just a discovery of British wildlife and you can do this all around the world of course we're on the east coast of England um, these flat rock pools here they're not the deep dark crevices that you can almost swim in in some parts of Britain's parts of Cornwall for instance and Wales these flat rock pools this is when to go go when the tide's nearly out or on the way out or when it's right out the tide's turning now because we weren't prepared the tide's coming back in health and safety tip number one depending where you are the tide can come in fast and it can cut you off that is something you need to really do your local knowledge on your local research on the internet it's quick to google now time tides you want low tides and find out when they are the further you out the further you are out the more interesting life so you might find baby lobsters out here right far out as far as the tide will go whereas they don't tend to occur as far in so different things are found in different areas one or two places you might tread on a weaver fish on sandy ground but i've never trod on one i've spent my life rock pulling certainly my childhood um, and just look at your footwear i've got no feet on it that's a bit daft isn't it because i have i've got feet on i've got no footwear on in the summer i would probably say decent waterproof shoes flip-flops waste of time they'll trip you up and slip over that's why i'm barefooted because that's what i was wearing today it just looks like water and seaweed these places sometimes the big rock pools sometimes just under some rocks that are wet i'm going to see what i can find the beauty of rock pooling and why it's an absolute wonder for anyone that's interested in wildlife but certainly to hook your kids every single day is different even on the same pool the same stretch who knows what the tide will bring in what's moving around out there what's going to get trapped on these rock pools so we're going to have a little dabble for half an hour we're here at west runton a favorite place of mine from my childhood on the east anglian coast and we're going to see what little treasures we can find so i know we're going to find shore crabs i think we'll find edible crabs here um, we're right near Cromer, the Cromer crab is famous around the world. Um, obviously we can't take and eat them, they've got to be a minimum size, but we can certainly find them under the rocks. I've found baby lobsters here, hermit crabs, and the fish life's amazing. The trouble is, not as easy to catch barehanded. So, totally unprepared, but you know what? I've got somewhere down there, a little plastic box I found in my car. We'll see what I can find in half an hour, and we'll report back. But rock pooling, without a doubt, is the place to take your kids and get them hooked on our wonderful British wildlife. I'm going to tell you now how to, no not you, not you, I'm going to tell you now how to catch a shore crab without getting pinched. There's a real simple tip that I've learned over many, many years. Now I don't mind getting pinched by a shore crab at all, but if you're worried, this is what you do. You wait, you wait, and you bide your time. And eventually, when you see a shore crab run around in a rock pool, that hasn't got any pincers, that's the one for you. Bless it, he's got a bit of survival to do now until this guy, this girl sheds the skin and then when she sheds the skin, she'll start to grow her claws back if she can survive that far. How cool is that? Shed your skin, you grow things back that you've lost. Watch her go. Go. Be free. <laughs> nice try, Evie. And that's how <laughs> and that's how to catch a crab without getting pinched. Ah. Moon jelly. Nice thing is on these guys. Once they've spawned, they get washed up. Oh, and the dog's tread on them. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Not these ones. Not if you're worrying about stingers. So, you can watch the sunset. 
beautiful evening, clear blue sky. But no, there's a massive strip of cloud on the horizon. So we watched the sunset. <laughs> we didn't really say it, we by the cloud. <laughs> How typical. Anyway, it does look gorgeous. Good old blighty. It's not that bad, you know. We're at the Norfolk Lavender, the National Lavender Collection. Acres of the stuff, absolutely gorgeous. Havens for insect life, for nectar. But oh, turning the clock back 30 years, this was at this time of the year being covered in hoverflies, bumblebees, honeybees, and especially white butterflies. There's one flying around, one white butterfly, one comma. What a shame. Whether native or not, lavender certainly does a good thing for insects in your garden when it comes to nectar and feeding stations. Lots to see here. Hey, there's even a ginger still in there. Just checking it. Just checking it on the eagles. Silly boy here. Singing, singing like only a fish eagle does. You silly old boy. For now, just giving my little fella Zeus a little bit of love here. Birds of prey, they're not affectionate. But one or two, one or two, seems to quite like a little scratch on their head. Norma's out and about. Norma though, I'm not satisfied having an enclosure 20 times larger than I'm used to. I'm going to have to have it steel lined or I will chew out. And concrete, you know, some gravel in there or I will dig out. Look at her. But I wouldn't melt. She's a one, she is. Look at her nose. Remember she's blind, she can't see at all. That nose is really important to her. <laughs> oh, she's cute though. We do love her. Norma! Norma, you look like a womble. Norma! Old oh, twitchy nose. If you go to holdme.com, you can put your tickets online for the weekend opening of the grounds and Icarus Falkery Centre, where you may be not only lucky enough to see Norma out and about, during our animal talks and falconry displays, you might even get to meet her and meet her in person. Holdme.com for a wonderful family day out, something for all the family. We've got the historic house. We've got the amazing historic gardens. We've got the beautiful falconry centre, falconry displays, animal talks, stroke encounters. It really doesn't get much better than that. Look at her. <laughs> anyway, we've got stuff to do, Norma. Really hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. Please take your kids out into the countryside. Anywhere will do, anywhere. Yourselves, your kids, it's all out there. It's all free. It is fantastic, fantastic. You'll never stop learning and being enthralled. Like and subscribe and we'll catch you and we'll check back in as soon as we possibly can.